Hello. The purpose of uh, today's video, um, besides demonstrating the use of the distributive property, is um, to demonstrate, more importantly, how we can check our work using pencil and paper and how we should check our work using technology. So you're going to have um, other exercises just like these, but I'm going to do uh, number one and number five, or six rather, for you, um, so that uh, you can at least know step by step what I'm going to be looking for in the assignment. In this case, I have seven times the number 23, and what the distributive property is invented for is to tell us that, look, you can break up the number 23 into the number 20 and 3. Reason being, 7 times 20 is easy, 7 times 3 is easy, and it's also easier to add these up. So it's better to do this than to try to figure out what 7 times 23 is. Just break it up into manageable chunks and add those chunks together. Distribute the 7. That is to say, I have seven 20s and I have seven 3s for a grand total of 140 and 21 more, or 161. Now, one way you could check this is just going back to your elementary school math, how they taught you how to multiply in columns. And in the process, you might recognize that you have been doing the distributive property the whole time, because this is 7 times 3, which is accounted for here, and this is 2 times 7, but it's really 20 times 7, which is why we put the, the 161 down there. So... Um, that's checking, or that's doing the work using distribution. This is checking using pencil and paper. And last but not least, you can go on to Desmos or find a calculator and type in 7 times 23 and make sure that the numbers that you got in both cases are consistent. Now, people don't use the distributive property like this all the time, and even if they do, they're usually doing it in their head. They're not going to write it all out. I ha chose to have you write it all out like this so that you can see, oh, this is the same thing we do in algebra when we don't know what the numbers are. See, I don't know what the number P is, but I do know that if I take 6 times uh, 7 minus 4P, I'm going to have to have 6 7s and 6 4Ps. In other words... To distribute, I multiply the 6 by the 7, and then I subtract. See, I just brought down this minus. I hope that's right. We'll find out, I guess. And 6 times 4 times P is 24P. One way to check is to pick any number for X that I want. I chose 2 in this case. And put X into the original given expression, which was 6 times the quantity 7 minus 4 times 2. You was 4 times X, now it's 4 times 2. I'm going to take care of the parentheses first, what's inside. So 7 minus 8 is negative 1, and negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Now I take my result, 42 minus 24p, and I put the same value x equals 2 in for p. Oh, I said x. That's a common mistake. I meant p. Let p equal 2, and then we put 2 in for p. And it turns out, oh, I got six, negative 6 as well, which means that I probably simplified this correctly. But just to make double sure, it's important to go into Desmos. And when you do type in each expression, you will find that they produce the same graph. When blue and green are combined, they make this sort of turquoisey color. Um, as you can see here, this is showing that the two graphs are overlapping each other, which means these are equivalent expressions. Both have the same value no matter what x is or p or whatever. So I hope you find this helpful. Like I said, you're going to have um, other exercises of your own that will look like... Um, this. So you're going to have four where you just practice using the numbers and then six more where you work with unknown values and show that you know the distributive property. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.